Welcome to Long Arm Wednesday. I'm Laura Lynn of the Mama Pop Quilt Shop and we're very happy to see you here today. Today we're working on my friend Pam, fellow crossing guard and guildmate of the Erin Village Quilters. This is something she's made for her husband to go up to their uh, cottage that they go up north and it's it's their hunting uh, place where they go and chillax and get turkeys and deer and fish and all sorts and do fishing derbies and have lots of good fun together. Uh, she made this up for him. It's a very spontaneous pattern as she was doing it as she was going because she was we're dealing with the measurements that she was working with from a couple of panels and some fabric um, and uh, I think it turned out amazing so I'm not we didn't do an edge to edge to stitch through any of the faces or the characters or anything else like that uh, the camel that she has like in sashing in between I did the ribbons or ribbon candy and um, and and then just to go around some of the bigger characters like some of the smaller ones I've just left because I think they just look fine just the way they are some of the bigger ones I've just kind of gone around like in a little um, a little echo just to, just to highlight them. So uh, we're going to finish off one little section or a couple of sections. So we're just going to go over here. So come on over. Let's do one of the big ones here. And it's off the belts. There's, it's all loosey goosey. And what I was doing, I had a, a nice uh, double pine tree stitch out that's going to go across the borders. So I have it going across here at the top. And because this is a directional quilt, I have the trees going this way here instead of like, you know, flipped or flopped. And the beautiful uh, border pieces here, they're absolutely stunning with all the animals on there. I'm going to actually put the tree across that. I don't think that will be uh, t too much to, to, you know, with the trees. I think just going through this with uh, an edge to edge might have been a bit much. So, but I think this will be okay. So let's just start off at the top here with our beautiful little ribbon stitch out. Or stitch. I'm not stitching it. I'm stitching it out. Ready? And I chose a complementary thread that would match everything so we didn't have to change threads a hundred times or anything like that. And it's really just highlighting her beautiful panel pieces and the quilt top that she has created, right? So slow and steady, just weaving it on down. She did a beautiful job. I absolutely love it. And I was hoping I moved it up far enough so I can get all the way to the bottom. A few locking stitches so none of it comes undone. Right. Oops, I got my magnet in between. Oops. <laughs> Get back here. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and then there's another spot here, so that's doing it um, uh, uh, vertically. And then that's in this, I'll show you how to do it horizontally. The same principle, you just just kind of got to watch. Look where you want to go, not where you are going or where you've been. So just kind of when you're guiding yourself, look to where you want to get to and then just make those movements. Trying to keep within the space here. Try not to go out. I mean, if you do, it happens, it happens, you know, it's no, it's no big deal. But uh, the point is to, to try your best and make them consistent. But you also want that natural organic feel to it too. You don't want it to be too machinized when it comes to some stuff, right? And the this is nature, I just figure let's easy movements of birds fly, how we walk in a path, you know. I love all the little blocks that she put in and she framed them up. Bless her, they are so pretty. All right, and then up here, and we're just gonna lock the stitches. All right, let's just clip those other threads. 
And then what I was doing around like the moose and then there's another uh, big couple of deers right up here is a bigger centerpiece of the panel. And then there's a bear over here and a couple of deers and I'll just go just around them. I'll just. Okay, he's locking that in there. It's almost better to think about it as um, echoing it than trying to just copy right onto the image itself because it's not it's not going to work. I mean, I guess if you were right in there with your ruler and going two stitches, you know, every few seconds, so, yeah, that's another story. But um, just want to just kind of like give it almost like a little shadow. Okay. And of course, come back and do some of those trees in the background. You could come back and do some of the hairs. You know, you could do more details in that. Just do a little bit of wave. And you come around and do the ears. And of course, the other big antler, horn. What do they call it? I guess it's still antler, isn't it? When it comes to moose? I know it's antler for deer. All right, all right, Pam, this is your quilt. Educate me. <laughs> Sorry for the popping in the background. I forgot to mute one of the things on my display. Okay. And again, just kind of want to highlight what's already there. You know, you could do this with really any sort of uh, good nature panel. Okay. And you could always add as many details as you wanted to. You could always come back with decorative thread being tracing out the, the animal, come back for beads with the eyes. There's, you know, so many different things that you could do to, to highlight it uh, for sure. Yes. So I've just been going through the um, sorry, uh, little sashings here of uh, little ones here and then big ones there. So we'll do, we'll do this side down here. Say, lock your stitches and a beautiful little fox. Oh, so gorgeous. And then they've got Canadian geese here and a deer and then a nice big bald eagle down here. Or That's gorgeous. This is definitely a treasure that I hope stays in her family for a very, very long time. And I hope she puts a label on it. Gotta put a label on it. <laughs> I know, I'm one to talk. There we go. And just gently and easy. Relax your hands. You could definitely be doing this on your domestic, doing simple things like this. Even if it's just adding a little quilting to a little zippered pouch you made, or doing strips on a bag, you're doing every other one to give that texture detail or, you know, fun quilting look. Just free and easy, easy movements. Okay. Easy movements. We'll just lock down stitches down here. Okay. And that is Miss Pam's quilt for her and Roy. Isn't that beautiful? She did an amazing job. I absolutely love it. And of course, the camo beautiful back. Can't go wrong with that, let me tell you. And I left her enough room, and she has enough of the backing that about an inch all the way around. I think it's that's where the shortest was over here was about an inch. I gave her that, uh, and I'll give her that extra. So she can actually make that backing go flip to the front and be part of her binding as well as making a tiny little extra border to help still border out this fabric, you know, so especially the sides part here. So but thank you, everybody, for watching, liking,
liking and subscribing. And thank you if you participated with us on the last live stream. That was May 30th. We did 12 hours, made four bags, gave them away to the fans, gave a t-shirt away, gave two panels away. We made cinnamon buns. We had such a great time. Uh, we're looking forward to our next 12 hours, which will be somewhere towards the middle to the end of June. We haven't quite picked a date yet, but just keep watching and listening for that. And hopefully you can partake with us there. We got, we're going to be giving away a quilt. We're going to make a quilt top. And you can, you can enter at any point in time during the day during that one, too. So, um, and you don't always have to be here. Okay? So big hugs to you. Thank you, everybody. And uh, we'll see you soon, okay? Enjoy the Wednesday. Bye-bye.